So we all use WhatsApp. Uh, one really neat feature that uh, actually WhatsApp provide is an end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, uh, what does this imply is that any message you send over WhatsApp to your friends uh, can only be read by your intended friend and no one else can read that. Not even WhatsApp servers, right? Uh, this is the notion of, an, of having an end-to-end -end encryption. In this video, we'll be understanding or rather implementing a really, really, really simple version of this end-to-end -end encryption scheme. This is nowhere close to how WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger or Signal app actually does it. But it would give you a fairly neat idea on if we were to implement it, how we could do that. Right. So uh, what do we have? We have two parties, A and B, uh, trying to have a chat, uh, exchanging messages. Uh, this is an unencrypted channel. Uh, you can assume it's WhatsApp or for the matter any communication channel. Uh, since it's unencrypted, it is susceptible to a very famous attack which is the man in the middle attack. So anyone can sniff uh, the channel and can extract the information out of it. right? Or worse, can actually alter and pretend to be someone else and then send the message. So this is really bad for any messaging system right so as part of solution what needs to be done is we want to have some sort of complete privacy so how do we ensure that so a very basic criteria that we want to satisfy is that any message sent by a intended for b can only be read by b and vice versa so message sent by b intended for a can only be read by a this are the basic two criteria that we want to fly by uh, the solution to this problem is a very simple yet effective uh, cryptography method called as public key cryptography. Uh, what it does is, what it has is rather, uh, it has a combination of public key and private key. One really interesting, uh, uh, one really interesting property of this is that message encrypted with the public key can be decrypted by the private key. Okay, a message encrypted with a public key, it cannot be decrypted by the public key, right? But a message encrypted with a private key can be verified by public key. Okay, which means that if I encrypt a message with my, pri uh, with my, uh, so if I encrypt a message with someone else's public key, only that party's private key, uh, 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 someone having access to the corresponding private key can decrypt the message. Right? So this forms the crux of this end-to-end -end encryption. Right? So now what we have is the two parties that we have, A and B, uh, they have each have uh, a public key and a private key. So the public key, as the name suggests, is publicly accessible to everyone, while the private key stays locally secure. It is not even uploaded to the server, right? So the private key is kept secure on your local. So if you're using WhatsApp, this sort of private keys hold is, is, is held in your mobile, not even with the WhatsApp server. So this private key has to be kept like really private. Uh, the flow is very, very simple. Uh, so A wants to send message to B. A encrypts the message with B's public key because A does not have access to B's private key but A does have access to B's public key so A encrypts the message with B's, with B's public key now this message post encryption becomes really scrambled right so the plain text gets gets encrypted and now it's unreadable uh, now this scrambled message uh, which seem, which looks like garbage is sent over to B and now what would B do B would use its own private key to decrypt the message right so we in order to extract the raw text out of it will have to use its own private key uh, on the scrambled message and extract the original message from it really simple right so this sorts of solve the problem uh, of having a raw text message being sent to another party and only uh, so and the message can only be read by the intended party 
right? This solves the problem. But there is this one catch. The catch is, how does B be really sure that the message is really sent by A, right? Anyone can masquerade as A and set, send message, right? How does B ensure that the message is really, really being sent by A? The answer is very simple. Add a digital signature, right? Uh, remember about the the public and private key concept what we did was uh, what I said was that a message which is encrypted by a private key can be verified by a public key right so now what I can do it is if now the flow may we add one more step where the first a encrypts the message M with B's public key right and now what A would do it is, A would create a very teeny tiny digital signature out of hash of the message and uh, will sign it with its own private key, right? Because now what would happen is A's public key is publicly available. Now this, since this digital signature is signed with A's private key and this digital signature is attached uh, to the message. So now if you see in this diagram, uh, what I've done it is, I have the message M encryption, we get the scrambled message and we have this, this, this teeny tiny blue colored signature, which actually piggybacks along the message, right? So uh, now the scrambled message along with this digital signature becomes your message that you send across. And to create this digital signature, you don't really need to use the entire message. You can hash the message and create a really tiny signature because all you have to do is just verify. You don't really care about anything else. And now once this message is received by B, B would first of all verify if the message is really sent by A. How it would do it? It would use A's public key to verify. B won't be able to decrypt the so B cannot decrypt the digital signature, right? B can just verify if the signature is indeed not meddled with, right? So someone in the middle has not altered the message uh, or uh, has not ha has not done anything funny with the message, right? In order to just do that, what uh, B would do it is B would verify the signature on the message and if the signature verification holds true and it is indeed sent by A, B would then decrypt the message using its own private key. So it would take up that scrambled message part out of uh, your uh, message plus signature and it would use it, it would decrypt it. And, and obviously, since B has its private key, the original raw message was encrypted using B's public key. So now B's private key can decrypt it, right? So now B is now decrypting the message and can and will extract the raw text from it. Bingo, so now, we have also solved that other problem. Now that we have really established the total, we have established total privacy. Let's see how it fits into the scheme of a chat application like WhatsApp. So, uh, uh, what happens is without any privacy or uh, without any encryption along the path, the flow is you have a raw message M, which A has, and A wants to send it to B. The message is sent over an unencrypted or an un, or an insecure channel. To API server API so the WhatsApp API uh, uh, takes that message stores it in the uh, stores it in the database and forwards it to B so if you see along this entire state the message is nowhere encrypted and even in the database you have the raw text stored okay. but uh, most of the protocols or most of the servers now use SSL or basically HTTPS what it would what it provides us it provides us with the transport level security so now a raw message M with A, when A makes an API call to WhatsApp API server using HTTPS, along those transport layer, the things are encrypted. Okay, so the message, the M gets automatically encrypted because of the TLS, because of the HTTPS, it is encrypted and is sent to API server. But API server, the SSL certificate is, uh, 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 SSL certificate is uh, breaks at API server or privately at the load balancer level and but the raw, raw text is accessible by the server and on the database it still stores the raw HTT, uh, raw uh, text message. Now what happens is now this message is forwarded to B. 
now since the channel between API server and B is also HTTPS, the message would be encrypted with a very separate key uh, as compared to uh, what was used between uh, A and API server. So now the raw message is still stored at the server but an encrypted message is forwarded to B, B decrypts the message and B receives the message. So over here the encryption and decryption was taken care by HTTPS. We did not do anything explicit there. right? But this is not an end-to-end -end encryption. Why? Because the raw text is still accessible by the API server. If you see the database here, it has an entry of raw text messaging because the database, because API server, so your, uh, your HTTPS TLS broke at the API server and there the entire raw uh, request was accessible which is how it stored the raw text onto server, which is why this exact, this is not exactly an end-to-end -end encryption. As a solution to this problem, what we do it is the approach that we discussed, uh, where we encrypt using, where A uh, encrypts using B's public key and B can decrypt it its own private key. What happens is A encrypts the message with B's public key, adds the digital signature, and this is transmitted over HTTPS, goes to API server, which stores this really, this, this encrypted message along with the digital signature into the database and this is then forwarded to B. And then B first verifies the digital signature uh, ensuring that it is intended by, uh, it is indeed sent by A and then it decrypts the message and gets the raw text back. Right, so this is exactly how uh, and uh, 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 by the way, uh, in the database, if you see over here, what we are storing is we are storing an encrypted message. Now, along this entire journey, the raw text message is only either uh, available to A because A has sent it here or post decryption at B. Nowhere else in the path is the raw message accessible. Right. So this is what an end-to-end -end encryption looks like. Now, how will user get each other's public key, right? So private keys, obviously everyone has it, but how will they get access to public key? So sharing of public key is okay because that's why it's, they are public key and you need them to encrypt, right? And uh, when a new contact is added to the list, you can, uh, along with the metadata information of a profile, this public key can be attached to it or, it or there can be a separate service that serves the public key, that holds the public key you can call it as a key distribution center having all the public key with it. So uh, typically in a JSON structure, you can have name and a public key attached. But do A and B get each other's private key? Hell no, because it defeats the whole purpose. So private key has to be kept private, not even on the uh, WhatsApp server, but locally on the phone. Right. So public key made accessible, really simple, but private key has to be stored locally. So where exactly is private key stored locally so just to reiterate, it and where where is public key stored it can be stored on whatsapp server whatsapp's database or a different service so no problem there uh, the solution that we discussed right now is a really 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 simple version of how you can ensure an end-to-end -end encryption it's to be really honest this is not even one percent of what whatsapp signal or uh, the facebook messenger actually does a protocol that they use is called as a signal protocol which is which which powers the which powers the signal messaging app it's really powerful uh, it's unfortunately it's so big that it that we cannot that it cannot be covered in this in this particular video uh, we'll be trying to cover it in some future one but to give you a gist what it does is it it literally encrypts every single message with a different key just imagine the complexity at which it's working. It It is encrypting message, all the messages. Like, now let's say you have basically thousand of chat in one session. Every single chat, every single message in that chat is encrypted with a different key. And this key is derived from a double ratchet, which means you have some sort of, you can think of it like uh, having like, uh, two cogs and upon sending every message it 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 goes to the next one upon now when B sends any other message it it, it 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 then clicks next so it's like deriving one key from another and using it to encrypt 
it's really interesting thing uh it uses it uses something called as a triple defi hellman key exchange and does four key exchange to create a master it's 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 a really interesting one it's little complicated but it's a fun read uh, i'll try to cover it in some time in next or in future videos but uh, it's really fun read uh, just google about the signal protocol and you'll you'll land up with a lot of videos and uh, special its research paper so yeah basically that's it for this video uh, i hope you uh, i hope you found it amusing on uh, how to implement a very simple version of an end to end encryption in any chat message uh, yeah so uh, that's it for it uh, i hope you like this video if you do uh, give this video a thumbs up uh, if you find this content interesting subscribe to the channel uh, and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton